Yes. Who is in this hat? <laughs> oh, for a special New Year's edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. Joining us in the chateau this week is the front lady of Bad Pollyanna, as she is an incredible artist. Now she's working on her solo material, and it is incredible. It's not music. It's not film. It's 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 everything. It is art. That's what it is, quite frankly. It is a work of art. It is incredible. The name is Olivia Hyde, and she, as I said, is incredible. This we, was quite a beautiful interview. Like she was just wonderful. She was so northern, and that's what I loved about her more than anything. <laughs> just not all so of her work, northern. Just like she was northern. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, but you know what I mean? Like obviously her work was incredible. Open Letter to Death is absolutely unbelievable. If you haven't seen it, go check that out right now. Um, but yeah, just I just love the fact that she was just like, for fuck's sake. And, it's, and there's a lot of dog. There's a lot of dog as well. There is a lot of dog. We I do seem to have guests involving their pets in these interviews. It's about 10 foot six, but you know, it's just, uh, he is an absolute <laughs> mammoth of a dog. He's a big boy, big boy. But yeah, a beautiful interview with Livia. was so much fun to talk to. And uh, I'm very excited to get this out for our special little New Year's edition. Obviously, we reached out to Olivia because her band, Bad Pollyanna, released the charity single, Invincible Girl, all for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, which obviously we are very much involved in. So it's amazing to talk to her about that project as well. But just to learn more about Olivia, because like I said, she is a creature of art. And the reason she does what she does in a dedication to her late father as well, it's an incredible story. And an open letter to death, as Tom said, go watch it. It is absolutely insane. Absolutely. But she pours a little bit of bleach down the toilet, has a clean, turns around and says things like this. Yeah, again, it was just like, well, what, what, what do I have to learn in order to do this thing I want to do? Learn, learn production design, I'll go and do that then. Um, and then, yeah, from there I learned about really what a director actually does, which surprises most people. And um, we've got a couple of interns at the moment, and I asked them what um, they thought a, a director did. And, I mean, they're only 20, but fucking hell, their answers were adorable. <laughs> well, it's the person that tells people where to stand and if people like have to come on and off, the director tells them to come on and off. I'm like, oh, dear God. <laughs> That's really not what's true. Bless them. They love. She gives the dog a pat on the head and says, oh, you're a good boy. And then says things like this. And I've said this on stage many times. So I'm only repeating what I've said in the past now. When I learned about Sylvia Lancaster, as far as I was concerned, this was her song. Like, I know people associate it with Sophie, but I associate it with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation and Sylvia, because Sylvia is the invincible girl. You know, yeah. if I'm, I'm sure if, you know, I'm sure if she could wave a magic wand, she'd just have Sophie back, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. But the fact is, that did happen, and she had a choice. She could either hate and be bitter forever, or sink into depression, um, or she could make something, she could make it mean something. And she's taken the worst thing that's ever happened to her and made it into something that's really beautiful, that's, um, that's, that's making other people's lives easier and other people's lives better, bringing people together. She's writing her open letter to death. Pauses for a second to tell us things like this. The fox does not want to play with you, Bob. <laughs> He's not dying to play with the fox. Come on, silly dog. So Sorry. is the plan to do all the songs off this project in this style? Um, yes, in the sense of the style being sort of creepy fairy tale for grown-ups. Um, but no, it won't all take place in sort of the same universe, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, empty Bears, like I said, is a study of bereavement using real bereaved people. That's right, guys. The Chronicles of Olivia Hyde, out New Year's Eve, 6 p.m. Be there or be triangle. I'm definitely, for New Year, going to be a dodecahedron. Ooh, fancy geometry.